hasn't exactly been a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> I don't know if Fred Rogers would approve or not. <laughs> More speaking the lies and hate instead of speaking the truth and love. Ah, what's a recovering codependent and supportive brother of butterflies to do? I think. Yeah. Maybe pose, maybe pose some some questions and a quick. Uh, maybe some quick lessons on another action-packed episode of Brother Mark Turner Syndrome, Butterflies in Life. And <laughs> oh boy, the flat earth people and the naysayers are, 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 are <laughs> but yeah, a couple of, just let me clarify just a couple of quick pieces of information. That's our neighbor with the dog. <laughs> But I guess let me get out of here. Uh, a couple of pieces of business. By the way, somebody come in there and say, You can't drive. I do videos at the same time. That's illegal. No. Okay. <laughs> well, obviously, that. Okay, then I guess you'll have to ask Amy Jo Tillard because that's actually where I got my inspiration. It was actually it was from the former life of. Uh, Life of Amy Turner Syndrome, because a lot of her videos were actually uh, drive. Well, sometimes it, we're at home, and but sometimes we're out. We're out in the car. So, but anyway, uh, also, you know, last, you know, last night somebody decided to text me and you know, started you know, griping and and. You know, didn't want, didn't want, you know, didn't want the butterfly sister and I to come to reconciliation. With. <laughs> it was really funny, and she didn't want, she didn't want to listen. And I, I, I kept that. Finally, I said, you know, have, you know, I'm gonna split it up. Have Molly call me so that we can go ahead and amicably settle our differences. And you know, by now everybody knows that. That Molly has been given a, an ultimatum to either come in for Christian reconciliation or we'll be looking at, at legal option. Because it's not good for Molly, it's not good for her, and it's definitely harmed members of the Turner Syndrome community. And I would even think the person that I had had a fight with last night, and it, and I'll I'll kind of kind of play my thesis in, in just a moment. But it's kind of funny. And I, I, I loved I it's not the She's not the only person that's played the Snow Six game. I won't, you know, I won't, I won't embarrass her. Cause I, I mean, we, for the most part, we up till, up till the bullies started running into first, we actually had a pretty chummy, pretty chummy acquaintance. I mean, we may not have agreed with everything, but I would, I would quietly, I would qu certainly quietly listen. But on the other hand, though, she had some really good things to say, and, and I think she had some really good, really good concerns. And then I think she got. Swallowed up by by all the bullying, by all the bullying rhetoric. Because I I kind of it was it was real it was really funny. It, it just kept repeating and repeating and repeating. And she you know she didn't want to listen. She didn't want to consider you know you know why I was taking the position that I that I did. And she's just screaming and using profanity, which is a I know she's a born again believer. And the Bible says, let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Only that which is edifying. So, I would have you know, I would have to question whether that conversation was edifying. Also, James writes, "My beloved brother, everyone should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For anger is not of the righteousness of God. I mean, God gave us two ears, one mouth, and I think that was a, and I, and I think in his biological." Hand of Providence. I think that was done for for a good reason. It, it was kind of funny though. Yeah, you know, the sister didn't didn't want to listen. It was really tragic. And it just kept going on and on. And finally, I had to I had to post. Yeah, you know, I just I think I must have pasted the same response. I'm still looking at it. Still going. Okay, well, this is a little insane. And but she's gonna. You know, I had to post. I counted. 23 times. Uh, you know, have Molly come, have Molly get a hold of me so that we can amicably settle our differences. Okay, that's and that's 
that's in the offing. It's it's a non-negotiable. It is going to happen. And but I'm going to I'm going to you now before I really comment on that, I'm going to see if, if that she will look at God's word and be in be in prayer and and actually do do the next right thing that our Christian faith calls us to do. Um, you know, we'll, we shall we shall see. Um, it, was, it was just it was just you know it was, it's just funny she didn't want to listen and and then she, then she accused me of stalking. But wait a minute, who initiated the conversation? I didn't call her. She texted me. She volunteered. I, I, it's funny. I've, I got a lot of naysayers who who, 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 play, who play that game and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I know enough about narcissism, narcissistic abuse. You know every trick in the book. I hope the, the a couple of observations though on, on that incident last night. I think of myself. I thought back and you know, finally I just blocked her. So okay, well this isn't getting anywhere. But I was laying in bed and I was just thinking, we used to be pretty chummy. I mean, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't buddy buddy or anything like like that. But I would say that we had a pretty thoughtful, respectful uh, acquaintance. I think she definitely had some concerns about the about the drama, and I think she had some very good, you know, very good words to say. But I think what's happening is the bullies are are, are setting the tone. And somehow, even a lot of Christians have just literally abdicated their their faith, and that you know that that concerns me because some of these some of these people are not only my butterfly sisters; they're my Christian sister. Uh, and that, you know, another another woman just didn't want. It, didn't, didn't want to listen. You know what? I'll tell you something, folks. If the half-brother of Jesus, James, says that everybody be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, I think it's there for, I think it's there for a reason. Maybe there's the fear of what would happen if I'm wrong. Um, there is a great video that that I that I that I did way back in the early years, early early days of the of the YouTube channel, called "What If I Got Fort Schuyler Wrong." I mean, if you look at the spelling, the reason is it's definitely a misspelled name and mispronounced. So, you know, it's okay that if you know you're wrong. God knows, and His love and His mercy. Is right there, and if we confess our sins, He's just and right, and will forgive us on all, all unrighteousness. I mean, He wants us to live. He, even Paul talks about a ministry of reconciliation. And then the other, the other last thought, I would actually, I was talking to a uh, uh, an instructor in a Pentecostal Bible school. Not that. You know, not in the Pentecostal persuasion, but but there, there are certainly areas where we can agree to disagree. But he was quite he was quite impressed with a with a comment because Molly does run away. She runs away. She hides. She has other people do her dirty work, and she refuses to be accountable. You know what? Adam and Eve tried that. And if you read Genesis 3, it didn't work out so well. Now, did it? And then if you look at, you remember Jonah? Uh, it, it had, the plot, I, I mean, I must admit, the plot was a little fishy, if you ask me. But uh, he, ran the, he ran the other way. And his running the way, other way endangered the lives of the people on the on the ship going to Tarshish, and they had to throw they had to throw him overboard. And as we know, uh, 
Jonah got a whale of an incentive. You know, also, if we read the book, he also had some resentment issues, but that's another sermon. Oh, and then uh, in the New Testament, well, Peter ran away from the Lord. Uh, <laughs> he, he ran away when push came, came to shove, uh, especially when the cock crowed three times when as Jesus was being crucified. However, there was a there was a beautiful time of of restoration. However, Peter wasn't done. Once again, Peter ran away. He whisked out and he buckled under the pressure of a group called the Judaizers. I mean, highly, highly heretical uh, sect that caused major division in, in, in the Book of Acts. If, if anybody follows their follows their Bible history, but the point is, is that you know Peter whisked out and the Apostle Paul found out about it in the second chapter of. Of Galatians, I think it's pretty pretty safe to say that the Lord let Paul let Peter have it. And open rebukes better than hidden love, faithful the blows of a friend, but profuse are the kisses of an enemy. But the final thought, though, is you know, look at the number of people that used to be friends with me and now are mortal enemies. Is that really God's will? I mean, I won't, I won't, I won't, I'm, I've been asked not to mention names, and I wouldn't. But I think if we all take an inventory of looking, look at the people that we were, that were good friends with me, and then the bullies ran interference. And let's look, uh, look at, I mean, I had one, one butterfly that I, I just loved for the world, and I just effectively referred to as my buddy. Gone. Uh, the relationship with Amy, Amy Jo Talarik, gone. Uh, I mean, I was just looking at, I was just looking at a, at a text message where she said, Mark, thanks for your support. Yeah, that's gone. Because of the bullying. Please folks, tell me where in the gospel that bullying is God's will. It's not any Bible that, that I've seen, so. All right. Yeah. So, I guess in situations like this, you got to say two serenity prayers and call your sponsor in the morning. So, oh well. well at least we know. At least we know what need, what needs to be done, and, and praying that the Lord will have His hand on everybody who needs to be involved. So, oh well. That and four dollars and forty-four cents will get me a vending non-fat one sugar in a raw latte. And I'll talk to you next time.